Good evening and welcome to I'm Listening Live. I'm Listening is a 24-7, 365 initiative that works to destigmatize mental health. At the end of the show, we'll be putting up some resources for those that need some extra support. I want to start by saying first, happy Pride Month. That's right, we've beginning Pride Month, so I want to give a special shout out to everyone in the lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, intersex, and asexual community, and also throw in a little shout out to those kinksters as well. Uh, and also thanks to the Supreme Court, who not only blocked, but also undercut Trump's administration's attempt to roll back health care protections for trans identified individuals. We definitely need protections around those that have gender creativity and diversity. So what a beautiful thing to happen at this time. And uh, listen, mental health wise, compassion, that's the word I keep co- throwing at you. But uh, that's where we consider the impact we have on others. That is the definition of mental health. And Black Lives Matters has reminded us of that, that we want to be good allies. And so that's what I'm calling everyone to think about this month. Regardless of how you identify or who you are, we can all be an ally to the Black Lives Matters movement or to the LGBTQIA movement. Because again, remember, paying attention to how we impact others is our responsibility. Now, COVID sadly swoops in and intersects because there are record rates happening right now. Some of the hot zones are Florida and Arizona, and my heart breaks to hear that. So remember, just because we are opening the doors and we're moving forward in the phases, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's safe because, again, some states are sadly having record rates. And that's where mental health comes in again because wearing a mask isn't about you. It's about others, just like being a good ally for any minority status individual is. And that is mental health. So please, please, please do your best. Look around at your businesses. How can we give people of different minority statuses positions of power and inclusion and also on a personal level make sure you're calling out any problematic languaging and also representation expose your family your friends and your children to all different kinds of gender racial and sexual orientative people and media i'm so proud of you you are definitely stepping in and we are expanding things what a beautiful time because again seeing yourself reflected back on television and in art and in music is how we all feel included and worthy of being recognized as just the human being that we are. All right, and now let's go to our first guest, Condola Rashad, actress, singer, songwriter, and multi-Tony nominee. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. I, I want to just start by saying I'm I'm so excited for you. I'm always really proud and thankful to see people that are able to engage all their different talents, and you're definitely one of those people who's doing everything. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> um, let's start by just talking about mental health in general. How how right now is your mental health with all that's going on, including COVID, self isolation? How are you? Uh, I'm I'm all right. I'm I really am all right. I um, I mean it's obviously been quite the journey, <laughs> um, but since the beginning of the quarantine, I I started to really just focus on the things that I personally needed to stay mentally healthy and spiritually healthy. And so I've kind of just continued those practices. And um, honestly, I I, I do feel that from the beginning, what I have been filled with the whole time is this huge sense of gratitude because yes, it has been hard to be in such a sense of isolation, but at the same time, you know, it's times like this where you just realize how fortunate you are if you wake up and you're able to breathe. And so if you can find the things that you are super grateful for, it does help to smooth out the rough edges of the quarantine, I found. What I haven't heard anyone use that word yet. And I think that's a really beautiful way to kind of center yourself through all this is the gratitude. And, you know, looking at your legacy thus far, which, you know, again, it's such an amazing legacy. And it's, you know, just you have so much more to do. But there's a lot of activism woven into your work. I, I saw that you did work uh, with donations and support for Save the Music and uh, Food Bank for New York City. Where where did your interest in activism come from? Oh well, as a human being, if there's anything that I can, do, I mean, it's 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 not really so much of an interest as it is just I feel a, a duty as a as a fellow human being to do whatever I can to help um, other humans around me. So it's just an organic sense that I have. 
Yeah, I love that. I mean, that's something I've been trying to call out for all the guests that I have on the show is we have these platforms, people are working the industry, people are listening, and people like yourself, there's people that are are, are following you, they're listening to you, you have a lot of meaning in their lives. And I, I want everyone to kind of pick, I was saying just one level of oppression or violence that's systemically in our culture and like make that your mission, choose a few. And then I stumble upon people like you that are hitting like all these different levels. And that's always inspiring to me because not everyone feels that way. Yeah. Um, so here at Channel Q, Give Up the Gold, we are loving that song. And we were talking before you came on about that video. Are people always commenting on it? That is a stunning, stunning video. Thank you. Thank you very much. And yes, it was a uh, that was a very I was excited about that one in particular, because uh, after I released Blue, which was the first video, um, as you as you can see, all the videos are quite different. And so when we released Blue, which was the first one, it became very apparent to me that I think everybody was expecting the rest of the videos to be in that very like soft gardeny vibe. And so it was fun for me because I knew what was coming next and nobody else did. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, these videos have lived with me for the past year. Um, I conceived them last year. And basically every single day of 2019 was spent building this project because I did it independently. Um, I just knew that a label wasn't going to allow me to do it the way that I've done it. A label wasn't going to allow me to release it the way that I'm releasing it. Um, and even to create it the way that I wanted to create it, because I knew that I wanted it to be a visual series and that I wanted it to be experienced through the videos and I wanted it to be experienced like literally like a series. But I knew there was, I couldn't explain that in words and no label would go for that. So I just decided to do it by myself. Um, so yeah, all of last year was, we, we shot the Spaced Out or Eat the series itself last August. And um, because I was the, the producer and I co-directed it as well, um, Literally all of last year was spent creating this from picking out the costumes to, you know, pulling cost pulling costumes from my mother's closet because it was my budget. I, pr I produced it. So, wow. you know, yeah. and, and finding a nail art, my, my nail artist, every single detail in all the videos, I had a hand in it. And so you, you see the journey of what it took to get there. Um, and, I, and I found my soul tribe. So, you know, my, my co-director, Maude Arnold, she's my friend since I'm 11 years old. Um, the choreographer from Give Up the Gold and also Running in Place, her name is Jessica Emanuel. She's a wonderful artist from um, here in LA. And she's also one of my best friends and she was my RA in college. So I, I went to my soul tribe to make this happen. And then after we filmed it, I also spent three months in the, in the editing room, which I had never done before either. <laughs> so God. the whole year was just spent, you know, creating this gift that I wanted to offer everybody. Well, well, well done. I mean, I was reading about how you were saying you weren't sure if it was going to get released because of Corona. And then you thought now's the best time to do it. So what happened was, is that we were always, we were always scheduled to release this at the time that it was released. It came out April 3rd. Originally we were scheduled to come out March 27th, which was just the week before that. And so when Corona hit, automatically what everybody's response was, and not even just on my team, but I think like generally everybody was like, okay, hold off. We'll just, schedule around it. We're going to pause. Right. And at first I was kind of like, okay, like, sure, I guess. But then I was kind of sitting with myself and one day, and I just kind of had this feeling where I was like, this is a really shadowy moment in humanity. This is a project that I put all of my light into. Why am I withholding that? Like why, why, why would I wait for a better time for me to release it? That's not why I created it. I didn't create it for me. I created it to offer it to people. So if my music, because music is healing to me, if I'm able to offer anybody two and a half minutes of peace, then so be it. And I have it. It's done. And the entire project is visual. So it's literally just a press of a button. And then I decided, oh, how I can also make it work is if I can find a way so that I can offer this artistically and also find a way for the videos and the music to basically support the community financially as well, which is why I link them to these organizations so that um, instead of just releasing the song and then saying, oh, and also go donate, it's like, no, 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 by listening and watching the song, you are helping this organization because that's where the, the money's going to go to. So the project kind of just um, self-sustains and, and operates on its own. I love that. And and it's and having heard the song before I saw the video, it's amazing how much more embodied I felt in seeing the video and then in now hearing the song because I see it in my head. And I also read, I think you were saying that some of it was inspired by Josephine Baker. 
Yes, yes. The, the golden goddess element in Give Up the Gold was inspired by Josephine Baker. I wanted to give an, I wanted to tip my hat to her, but I wanted to find a way to do it in like Josephine Baker in 2020, essentially what I was, what I wanted. And my amazing team, um, Timothy McKay, who did my makeup, um, and Anissa, who did the costume, like they immediately knew what I wanted. I said exactly what I wanted, and that's literally what they did. But I couldn't have done it without them. I mean, they they both had their image of what it was, um, and and we all kind of came together, and that's essentially what happened. And she and it just so happens that Anissa, who is the costume designer of the Golden Goddess outfit, that's the outfit with all the feathers. She made that by hand, by the wow. way, by herself. Wow. Um, yeah, she's. I mean, she's incredible incredible and mind you again like i had a very independent budget she somehow made that entire costume and other costumes in that video with the budget that i gave her and it just so happened that her idol is josephine baker wow. so when i told her she was like oh i got you i know exactly what to do <laughs> it, it's interesting because I, I i swear this i swear this is what happened so i i've always been a little bit aware of josephine baker i was really moved when i saw the film made about her a couple decades ago and in watching the video, I, I I saw it. I felt it. It was embodied. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm glad. I'm very glad that that translated. A hundred percent. And and just you know, just tying in like your own mission and your own legacy thus far. You know, she was such a powerful activist as well. And so, what a beautiful mirroring of the two of those. Um, I wanted to ask you about a couple quotes that you you put out there that I thought were really beautiful and and personally moving for me. One of the things you said is, "Don't put yourself into a box." And you kind of phrase that as the way you live. I mean, yeah. in, in 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 being familiar with you and also just doing some more research, I clearly see that. But speak more to what that means for you yeah so what that means to me is like for example as an artist I have had the great honor and the great fortune in terms of the stories that I've told as an artist I've jumped all over the place from Joan of Arc to Juliet to a young wife in Texas during the war to uh, let's see, late 1800s in Norway, <laughs> to you know, Kate Sacker is a lawyer and billion. You know, I've just jumped all over the place, and that has been my trajectory. That and um, again, that's there's two levels to that, which is I just had the great fortune of doing that, right? So there's there's that element, but I do believe that the other element is I have walked through my life with the understanding that I am a storyteller. So I will tell any story that you give me. And because I know that about myself, that is the way that I walk into the room. And because I walk into the room that way, I attract certain things into my life. <laughs> and so there will always be people who will put you in a box. Always, that, that's we humans, we like to label things, it's a thing, right? And there's no need getting worried about it. There's no, there's no, I never waste my energy getting upset about other people putting me in a box because it doesn't matter. As long as I don't put myself in a box, it doesn't matter. Let them do what they'll do. It does, as long as it doesn't change the way you think about yourself, keep thinking about yourself the way you want to think about yourself. Let everybody else have their own opinion. That's not your business. You know? Oh, so liberating. I felt that in my body <laughs> as you said that. <laughs> I'm yeah. totally like consuming as you speak. So thank you for that. That was beautiful. Yeah. Um, so I also wanted to touch on something else that I that was personal for me because, you know, again, um, I'm, a, I'm a licensed therapist. I, I'm published. I do some media. And a lot of people reach out and they'll say, like, how do I do what you do? And I say, oh, my God, there, there's such a long journey. And you were quoted as saying the reward is in the work and the beauty yeah. is in the action actual work. And so are you saying, um, have a goal and keep around the prize, but also find the beauty and the value of the path and the journey? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I like to say, there's something else that I like to say too, which is, I don't even know where this came from. I did write it down. I, I think, I think this is my own quote. I wrote it down. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I go back to it often. I think I did. I think one day I was sitting quietly and I wrote this down, but I said something along the lines of, Plant the seed, not out of love for the flower that will follow, but out of love for the seed itself. Mm. And what I mean by that is the journey, the initial steps of the journey, that's where the joy stems from. So we get too caught up sometimes in what will happen at the end, you know, the red carpet of things, how things will be received. But that's what that's where the joy gets sucked out. The journey, the work, 
That's what's important. And that's where the hap- that's where the joy lies in the work. Especially because those those flowers aren't always even promised, right? Yeah, you never know. And you can't hold it too tightly. Just plant the seed. And with, with pure intention. So how do you how do you, I, I, how do you maintain that? Because you being, you know, multi Tony nominee. So how do you not get that pressure on your back to live up to that bar? Because I feel like there's there's a compliment and a beauty in awards, but also I feel like there's a pressure and an expectation. So how do you how do you keep your, your foot in both of those spaces, the journey, well, but also. I, yeah. Yeah, I think. Well, one thing is that I've never expected to be nominated all four times. I was never expected. Wow. So like, so it's always a surprise for me when I'm done. I'm always very grateful, and you know, obviously it's 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 wonderful. But like, uh, I don't know. I, I guess again, it's it's kind of just the way that I walk through my life, where my focus is always just the work. So as long as I am putting in my full energy into the work itself, and my intention is pure, that's always what I'm focused on. Um, and if you stay focused on that, then you won't feel the pressure because the pressure is all in your mind anyway. And, and if there are other people who are having that, once again, that's their business, not yours, you know? So as an artist, it's not about awards, right? Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that's not a good thing and that's not very wonderful, sure. But as an artist, you know, that's not, that's not why you become, that's not why you're an artist, right? That's not really why. And if it is, then that's something to look at. Yeah, because like we said, that seed might not turn into a flower and you'll be disappointed. And so find the joy, keep your head down and do the work, right? Totally, because if you don't love the work, then why are you doing it? That's right. That's the thing, because you never know how it's going to go. But if you love the, I, well, and that's the thing too. Like I've been a part of things that were not as successful as other things, but because I love the work, it was still something that I that I brought with me ahead in the future. It was still something that I learned from. It was still something that I had joy. That I, it brought me joy because I love what I do. Yeah. And whether or not you love the work shows up in the work you produce, because I feel like when I'm listening to your music and I'm watching your videos or or watching you on Billions, which P.S. is one of my all time favorite shows. So it's awesome (laughs) to see you. Um, You can feel that. I feel like you can feel the difference between someone who's loving the work and in it and someone who's just maybe doing it for alternative reasons. Yeah. For sure. Um, and I wanted to just finally talk quickly about representation. I feel like it's an important topic these days. Um, talk to us about what that meaning is for you, because I know for myself and as a therapist working with people of all different kinds of identities, whether it's minority status with gender or sexual orientation, representation is such an important part of their own mental health and for them to thrive. What are your thoughts on it? I mean, 100 percent representation matters. Beautiful. Repres- and- absolutely matters. Um, yeah. And do you feel like, I mean, I, I think you'd agree we have a lot more work to do in that. Way more work. Way more work. And we'll do it. And we'll do it. And we continue to do it. Um, but there is there are there are still many groups that are highly underrepresented in the LGBTQ community, um, in, in other communities of color. There's, 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 there's still a lot of underrepresentation. And I think that we are in a prime moment where that can change because of the issues that we are finally addressing in this country. Yeah, what a, what a year, and, and and this feels different to me than any other movement in the past. And so my fingers are crossed, and I'm feeling helpful. Um, Dola Rashad, thank you so much for being a part of the show, and you know, again, congratulations on killing it at literally everything. <laughs> thank you so much. It's been a joy talking to you. It was a pleasure sitting with you. Be well. Have a great night. All right, you too. I love that message. You know, keep your head down and focus on the work. Nothing's necessarily promised. And again, mental health means quality of life. It matters every step of the way. But again, activism. I love sitting with anyone who makes their work rooted somehow in activism. We still got a lot of work to do. Beautiful things happening. And uh, she's very inspiring me to me. But definitely check out the new uh, song and video. It's it's quite stunning. All right. Now we're going to go to our next guest, Autumn Calabrese, creator of the 21 Day Fix and author. How are you? Welcome to the show. I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, thanks for being here. So what an important topic to talk about, the intersections of movement and mental health. You know, I think a lot of us during the COVID self-isolation, we thought, how much more sitting could we possibly be doing right now? <laughs> yeah, So. Much. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was thinking about. Like a lot of my career is a lot of sitting. And so I think for me, exercise has been a really important sanctuary for me and a way to just kind of like get all my juices flowing. So let's kind of talk about that topic. What do you see as the importance of movement and exercise when we talk about mental health? For me, so I actually have really bad anxiety. I have since I was a kid. So I grew up dancing. I was a a competitive dancer. And that's really where I realized just how much physical activity could impact my own personal mental health 
because when my anxiety would hit, I would be able to go to dance class and move my body and let that release out. So for me, it's not physical activity, exercise. It's not just about, you know, six pack abs or like, do I look good? That's fun. But it's really about, do I feel good? And even my, uh, my 11 year old son, unfortunately also has really bad anxiety. And when it hits him, the first thing we do is go move. We go for a walk, we go for a bike ride, we go swim in the pool. And it's crazy just how much it can relieve something like that. So it just goes to show you our bodies are made to move. They want to move. So all this sitting, yeah, this has not been great for us. Yeah, it's interesting. That That's kind of my own story as well. I was always like a higher energy kid. And our culture is so fixated on sitting still, especially like during school. And I just wish that 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 understanding of how it can help with mental health issues i wish someone in school and in therapy had said like go run like get up and move move your body because i know even during therapy sessions there's some clients where i say to them do you need to stand up do you want to walk around the room do you need to move your body um it's it's a really powerful powerful thing and i also know for me like I exercise probably about five days a week and i can't imagine what my mental health would be like were i not to be able to do that well, I've unfortunately had a few injuries in my life being in the profession that I'm in. So I've had to experience that. Like two years ago, I sprained my entire hip complex. So I was down and out. I couldn't even walk for three weeks. And it was right in the middle of a ton of work for me. It was right before I was about to film a major fitness program. So I really had to do all the work I needed to do to heal my hip. But part of that included being more still and um i would like sit on the couch and sometimes i would just have to like move my arms and things like that just to get some sort of movement and as i started to get relief on my hip and it started to heal i would get in my pool and i would just like move my arms and things like that because the more i sat the sort of worse i got like mentally emotionally like the anxiety would build up and and things like that and i just noticed i wasn't handling situations the same way I would normally handle them if I got up in the morning, got my workout in, got my endorphin rush in. So, yeah, it's it's not not pleasant when you're used to it, when you're used to it five days a week and then all of a sudden it's taken away from you. And, and let's talk about the diversity of what falls under the label of exercise or healthy movement, because I know there's some people where they're a little scared of that. They think that we're talking inherently about you got to get a gym membership. You got to worry about, you know, doing things right and people watching you. So what what falls under the title of exercise? Honestly, any anything where you're moving your body really can be right. Like if you're new to it, if you haven't been moving your body, go for a walk like that's the most basic thing that you can do that our bodies are built to do. It doesn't have to be so strenuous. You can go for a walk. Like I said, you can go for a bike ride. You could swim. You could run around and play with your kids. You, you don't have to go to a gym. Um, you know, We've got the big group going on right now, the big fix, where we're doing my workout program, 21 Day Fix. And that's, you know, that's more of a fitness program. But even that was really designed for people um, – who had maybe been living a more sedentary lifestyle and wanted to learn to get up and exercise and do it in their own home, do it with really minimal equipment, have a modifier there to show them the way to do it. So there's so many different things that can count as exercise. What I always tell people though, is that you have to find something that you enjoy. Because if you don't have some level of enjoyment from it, I'm not saying that won't make it mean that it's hard or challenging at times, but if you don't have some level of enjoyment, you're not going to stick with it. And that's what a lot of people do. They get set in a mindset of like, oh, I have to run. Running is going to be the way to lose weight. So I have to run, but they hate running. And so then they don't stick with it or like, oh, I have to do this gym class that I really don't like, but I'm going to go to it. And then they don't stick with it. So when you find something that you can find enjoyment in, that makes it that much easier to stick with it. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. Like, you don't have to be miserable. There's so many yeah. things you can do because I, I'm sensitive, so I like doing all my workouts in air conditioning, whether it's home Same. or out at the gym. And so when the uh, self-isolation first happened and everyone was like, oh, I'm going out for a jog, I was like, oh, man, that's never going to happen. No. No. I, I'm like you. I need, I need some AC in my life. I don't want to be hot when I work out, so... Yeah, a hundred percent. I like controlled environments when I'm doing my workout. Yeah. So talk more about the program that you've put together. So that is something that can be accessible to everyone at any level. 
Yeah. You know, that's the beauty of Beachbody is that they, they're home workouts. That's their, what we design them to be. Because of all those reasons, people are shy about the gym. They get to the gym and they don't know what to do on the equipment once they get there. And so they don't see progress or hiring a personal trainer can be really expensive. And so they're not, they're not really sure what path they should take. With 21 Day Fix, I really wanted to create something that could help break the bad habits that we have of living this really sedentary lifestyle and start to build new habits. Hence, 21 days, because that's what they say it takes to make or break a habit. So we're breaking some old habits. We're setting some new habits into motion. So for 21 days, you actually work out seven days a week. Now, people might be like, well, isn't that overtraining? They're only 30-minute workouts, like I said. And I designed them where we're hitting different muscle groups each day. So body parts are getting a chance to rest. Like we have an upper body day. We have a lower body day. We have a cardio day. We have two active recovery days in there, yoga and Pilates, so that you still get to set your mind to, okay, I'm getting up and I'm doing a workout, but it's not uh, weight training. So you're stretching everything back out, things like that. And after those 21 days, people so quickly realize like, oh my gosh, I formed a habit and I look forward to my 30 minute workouts. And hey, I had a lot of fun bonding with the cast. And great, there was a modifier in there that I could really relate to that gave me somebody to start with. And the results have been incredible. This has been one of Beachbody's number one programs for seven years. And it's been six years, seven years. Um, but it's been in that spot for a reason because it's easy to follow. They're not like really complicated movements. You know, we're not trying to do handstand crazy things. It's like, here's how we squat, here's how we lunge. Uh, <laughs> here's how we pair the movements together to get really great results. It's get in, you get out, you get on with your day. It's 30 minutes. And then I paired that with my nutrition program, ultimate portion fix, because I really do believe they go hand in hand. Even when it comes to our mental health, like what we put in our bodies is, has a huge impact. Yeah. It's interesting because I know like before this COVID thing happened, I was a diehard gym person and I thought there's no way I'm ever going to work out at home. And then being forced to, I actually found a new love and respect for it where I thought it wouldn't feel the same, but it actually felt better. And what I realized is I have a really busy schedule. And I think sometimes having to leave the house and go to the gym actually made my life more chaotic and stressful. And so anything that's home workout based, I think actually is going to give you more longevity and sustainability. So I definitely appreciate that part. And also, like, again, I'm so high energy that if I want to sleep well and I want to feel good, I need to do something every day. So, like, I I, I, res I totally respect that. So what what would someone do after the 21 days? Is it something that someone can keep running themselves through? Are there other levels? How does that work? Oh, my gosh. There's a bunch of different things. I mean, I've seen people do 10, 11, 12 rounds of it back when we created it. I took a test group through it because as for, with Beachbody, we always test the programs to prove that they actually work. I took a group of people, the same group of people through it 11 times in a row and mm -hmm. watched the results every single time. Now you could do that. I have other workout programs on Beachbody. I have nine other workout programs on Beachbody. There's a ton of other programs on Beachbody. Um, so you can progress, you can pro progress 21 day fix extreme, 80 day obsession, the master's hammer and chisel. But you can also take this newfound love of exercise and hey, okay, 30 minutes and you can, like I said, you can transfer it to other things. Like maybe you all of a sudden want to dance a little bit, and, but you don't want to go dance in a classroom. Maybe you, you know, <laughs> that's so, me. Don't put me in a dance <laughs> class. You don't want to see what's going to happen, but I'm into it on my own privately. So I like that. But I tell people like, even with 21 day fix, like when you do it multiple times, the biggest thing you have to do is you have to challenge yourself because eventually you'll adapt to movements, but if you up your weights, if you push a little bit harder within the movement that we're doing, you're going to keep seeing results. Like that's the key is to continuously challenge yourself. That's really what it's all about. So I even talk about that a lot in my new book, Lose Weight Like Crazy, even if you have a crazy life. Um, and I put two new workouts in that that actually are like two new versions of 21 Day Fix workout, just so people have something else that they can 
turn to if they want to. Yeah. And I also just want to call out that there's like a really beautiful meditative piece to all of this, where even though I think it's like high heart rate and it's a lot of movement for me, I put on my music and it's, and it's like my time that it's just about me. It's just for me. I'm my most creative when I'm working out. And so I just want to kind of point that out to people that aren't familiar with a lot of exercise or movement that there's actually a really powerful meditative piece, even though it sounds like it's the opposite of that. Right. Yeah. I think you just said something that's so interesting. You said you're your most creative when you're exercising, which I am too. So if I'm ever stumped, like when it comes to like a work idea, if I'm in the middle of writing a workout and I'm just, I need creative juices, music goes in and I go, usually that's when I like to do something that's like a little bit more mindless for me, like jump on a treadmill, go for a walk, get on the stair climber, because I'm moving my body. And as I move my body, the juices just start flowing and that's where some of my best ideas have come to me. So I have my phone always nearby and I've got a million different notes. In the yes. Because I'm like, oh, I had an idea and I had another one. And, and yeah, it's such a great place if you're stumped. Yeah. And just to like close out on the mental health piece, I know I'm someone where uh, genetically and personally I skew towards anxiety, like you said, but also depression. And I know there's some days where I I had that fork in the road and I say to myself, you know, I'm either going to lean into the depression and there's days where that's okay, sit in the feelings, but then there's other days where I want to kind of push myself through and exercise and movement is a really good way for me to kind of work myself into a different mood state. Yeah. Especially with what's going on in the world right now, there's been so much with with COVID, with Black Lives Matter and and everything that's happened, there are days where you really do need to just feel it. You have to let the emotion out, right? So I'm with you. There are some days where I'm like, okay, I gotta gotta sit with it because I need to process it. But once I do that, then I gotta get rid of it. And so that's when I use, I get up and I use movement to help pull me out of it. Beautiful. And I also just want to say to our viewers that they can join uh, Bod and the Big Fix group with a free trial by texting code RADIO, R-A-D-I-O, to 303030 to get a free 14-day trial. Not mad at that? Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, Autumn Calabrese, thank you so much for being a part of our show. Have a beautiful night. Thank you so, so much. Thanks for being a part of the Big Fix, and we hope to see you guys all in there. Beautiful. Be well. All right. So I I love those tips. You know, I'm always trying to give practical mental health tips. Again, mental health is about feeling all your feelings, but that doesn't mean that it's not okay to focus on other factors to somehow help support us and pull us out of some moods and help us regulate and decrease the intensity and amplification of other moves. And uh, I'm a big fan of nutrition, but also movement and exercise. And as we just talked about, don't be afraid. There's so many different ways to get your body moving. And it really helps not only with memory and sleep and anti-aging, but also with mood regulation and management. That is our show. We'll be back next Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. That's 8 p.m. Eastern. You can check out all of our past episodes at radio.com. As always, thanks for hanging out with me and you all have a beautiful, beautiful night.